Welcome, my name is Richard, and today I want to do a quick range test of the Tesla Model 3 Standard, the Highland version 2024 car. I have range tested this before, but that was when it was new, fresh battery. This car is now over a year old, and it has 23,522 miles on the clock, so it's not new anymore. So this standard range is also the only tester you can buy now where you're not going to be clobbered with a £600 per year road tax uh, for five years, which you would on any other Tesla in the UK because it's over £40,000 new. Only applies to cars that are registered new after April 2025, this is. But if you went down to Tesla today and bought a new Model Y, a Model 3, long range performance, your first year is cheap, 20 quid, but then it's £600 a year. However, if the car is under £40,000, which the Model 3 standard just about squeezes into if you pick no extras, then it will remain at 190 or 195 a year. So, uh, it's quite an important car list for Tesla. It just about brings them under that threshold. And I think, I've always said as well, to be honest, I've owned the long range, I've owned the performance. I've always said really the sensible choice anyway is the standard range. It's got all the range most people need, but it's quick enough and it is cheaper it's a lot cheaper than the other ones so you still well spec still got a screen at the back here and i've got all the toys and the double glazing and dual chargers and all that kind of stuff that you normally give a tesla however much cheaper so i think it's a sensible choice the reason for doing a range test again is the this is the lfp battery 60 kilowatt hours now what we've seen with various battery testing that we've done so far and i've done one video already with quite a lot of data and there'll be more to follow is that the LFP is very good for longevity and battery health long term, but it does drop a bit in that first 20 odd thousand miles. It actually goes below, you know, loses more of its capacity in that first zone than the long range batteries tend to do. However, longer term, it looks like they then lose very little, so in the long term, more steady. But my point is, this car here has got 23 and a half thousand miles, so it would have taken that initial degradation here. If I've got the battery test data when I release this video, I'll bring it up on the screen. But it wouldn't surprise me if it's in sort of lower 90s, already probably 92% of its original capacity, something like that would probably be my guess. Could it be 90? But that would be quite normal for the, the standard. So what will it do now? Well, this is just a practical test. And like I said, I wasn't planning to film this, hence I'm just doing this on my phone. I'm doing it in the car, so I hope the sound's okay. Uh, but I've got 69% of the battery now. I'm about to leave Bedford and drive back to our warehouse, which is in New Milton, right on the south coast in Hampshire. Uh, we're on the Dorset border, New Forest, beautiful area. So I'm gonna head back there now. It's a Friday afternoon in the UK. Uh, what's the exact time? It is 12.59, so it's called 1 p.m. 69% battery now. I'm just gonna reset trip A. Um, I'm just balancing my phone on top of the screen here to do this. So trip A has been reset. Let's do that now. And what I'll see is how much energy we use, what efficiency we get. I've actually just run the corner from a petrol station. The tires are a bit low, so I have just set all the tires to their exact 42 psi. One of those ones that beeps when it gets to it. I'm looking at it now. It says 42 psi. Exactly. Nice warm day today. So uh, what have we got? 17 degrees Celsius, and it's um, it should be dry all afternoon. Now, if I put in now 69 percent. Well, I've got now, driving back to our work, it's 135 miles. I should arrive with 12% of the battery left. So I don't need to charge, can do it in one go. Two hours, 47 minutes. I'll see if my battery lasts that long. I've reset a proper trip because I probably will stop on the way just for some food or something, but I won't do any charging if I don't need to. So let's see what we got. And is the Model 3 standard range the sensible, the one to pick? And you've got to remember, if you pay the premium tax on the other cars, that's gonna cost 400 pounds times five, another 2,000 pounds to own one of those cars over one of these, unless the UK suddenly changes its tax rules, but I don't think it's gonna happen. So anyway, here we go. And I'll, do you know what, I've always said, I like the rear wheel drive testers anyway. I, I like rear wheel drive cars, always have them, but they're just a bit lighter at the front end. They just feel a bit, uh, a bit more you know, balanced. They don't have the weight at the front. They just feel a little bit better, a little bit better ride, I think, as well. Of course, this is a Highland model, which is much smoother than the earlier ones. It does have quite a good ride, very quiet cabin. I haven't driven one of these for a little while, actually, probably since they first came out. Uh, so let's take on this long journey. See so here we go, three hours in the car, and I'll give you a verdict to what we get. Okay, slight change of plan. It's now 2.30 p.m. I've done the M25. The traffic was good in bad, but I've beaten most of it. However, I could do with a wee, could do with some food. I haven't had any lunch yet. So I've stopped at fleet services on the M3. I don't need to charge. I'm at 46% of the battery and I will arrive my destination with 24%. 
so I don't need it. However, I've now got the car on my Tesla account and I've got some credits which give me free charging. So whilst I'm stopping anyway, I may as well plug it in and charge. No preheating, I didn't want to affect the efficiency, uh, which is remarkable by the way, although it is warm, it's now 20 degrees and the traffic's been slow, 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. Uh, I mean, I've covered 70.9 miles uh, in the hour and a half I've been driving. So you can see it's not been the fastest, but I've been going as quick as I can. It's Friday afternoon, I want to get back. However, I need to go to the toilet, so I'm going to plug it in now, 46% from 69, and then we'll go from that afterwards, all right? Okay, unplugged, uh, 2.51, so it's 20 minutes. I've got 83% of the battery. So, uh, what was it, 46, I think, when I stopped? Back up to 83, so we'll measure it again from now. But the trip will show us how many miles we've done, the efficiency, and how much energy that used. Okay, I'm gonna drive, speak to you in a bit. It was on 63 as I pulled up, actually, by the way. And uh, if I go to my trip here, let's see, 134.5 miles used, 24.4 kilowatt hours used. And look at that efficiency, 181.4 hours per mile. So there's some great numbers here. Um, one that's over five and a half miles per kilowatt hour which is crazy i mean i was driving back as quick as i could albeit it's been favorable conditions for efficiency it's warm although i've got the air con blowing i've still got my jumper on on the 21 degrees out there but yeah uh, actually 18 here it was 21 just now anyway climate on radio on just driving as quick as i can on the motorway but with the traffic it was a bit slower so it does help with efficiency but still I'm sure there's a lot of owners of Model 3 standards, Highlands especially, where they will testify that 181 miles per mile is not hard to get. That's five and a half, over five and a half miles per kilowatt. But what does it mean for real world range? Well, I used 23% uh, and then 20% there for that journey. So I used 43% uh, to do 134.5 miles. Do a bit of pro rata calculation. That comes out to 312 miles of range. That is crazy. I mean, again, you can look at it like I've done 134 and a half miles and used, according to the trip here, 24.4 kilowatt hours. Uh, so this is a 60 kilowatt hour pack. It'll be a gross, uh, a bit less than that usable, but still significantly under half. So about 43% is probably about right uh, to do that kind of mileage. So this car, a standard range, can do over 300 miles driven a bit sensibly on nice weather. Uh, well, not driving sensibly, I'm just driving as good, but with slightly heavy traffic in, in nice weather. Uh, now that is, I, I, I had a Model 3 performance for, I don't know, 4,000 miles, 5,000 miles, Highland, and I wouldn't have got that efficiency anywhere near it, and not that range either. Best I could get out of that was about a pro rata range of 280, maybe 290 miles, but like, on a good day, like that was very disappointing range of performance. I also had the, the Highland long range, I did 6,000 miles in just six weeks in that car. And in that car, I used to get about 225 watt hours per mile, sensible, so four and a half. And I could get over 300 miles of range on that. But even then, I'd normally say up to maybe 320, maybe 330. I've not owned the Highland Long Range Rail Drive yet. That's the car I would like. Uh, probably the most if I was buying one. However, consider this tax rule in the uk that any new model 3 now forget the ones before april 27 uh, 2025 they're all counted the same like this used one um now 195 pounds a year to tax not free but 195 however a new one if you're ordering a new tester today this model 3 standard is the only one and as long as you don't even put any extras on it is the only one which qualifies for the cheaper road tax you don't get the premium car tax uh, applied which is any car electric diesel whatever over forty thousand pounds has this premium car tax and an extra four hundred pounds applied from the first time it's retaxed after new until the car's over five years old so you've got basically five years of an extra two hundred pounds extra two thousand pounds um yeah extra four hundred pounds sorry for two years so anyway extra two thousand pounds ownership really you're gonna keep it so if i was buying a new tesla and the model 3 was big enough and practical enough i would just get a standard because it's just great that efficiency is remarkable how many times do you really need to get a bit quicker i mean it's not as quick as the others but it's plenty quick enough uh, it's not four-wheel drive of course but i'm on the south coast so i say you don't need it where you are you might 
but you've got to consider how much extra would it be worth paying more and that extra road tax for the long range the dual motor the performance you know the performance is twenty thousand pounds more than this and i'll tell you what i enjoy driving this just as much performance i mean i couldn't take this on track it's not quite as quick of course but the purity of the way it drives because it's rear wheel drive and no motor at the front it's a bit lighter at the front i can honestly say that just driving on the road i i love the feel of this car now i'm kind of picking bones but the ride is better it's lighter at the front it actually handles and feels better has a better purity it's 20 grand cheaper in the performance i mean i get the performance i mean it's a stunning car but this is this model three standard is just great this is where it's at and i'm gonna declare this is my favorite test especially if you're buying a new one now with the new tax rules the new model y i've driven to a recent video that is also smooth and comfortable with the highland and the new Y, they've sorted out suspension it's it's more refined than the previous car it's quieter and it's smoother but of out of all the model threes this is the smoothest it's, it's just again a bit lighter probably has softer springs it's smoother than the long range um so I think it's the nicest to drive. The range can be over 300 miles. The efficiency is incredible. It's a joy to drive. I mean, I've got to put this in perspective. My, I Back in the day, I, so going back 15, 16 years, I used to have a BMW M5, the E39, the V8, and it was an animal. It was a dream car of mine. I've got, I got one. I loved it, uh, and it was a savage thing, but that was 0 to 16 just over five seconds. This, this is about the same, <laughs> and it's rear wheel drive. So, yeah, this is this is fantastic. Uh, the rear wheel drives I've always liked from even the earliest Model 3s. My first ever Tesla Model S rear wheel drive. I'll stick by that today. I still like the way they feel and drive. So, uh, and then this one is cheaper on tax. Crikey, that's a no-brainer. I think as long as it's big enough and practical enough. But how many times do you want it that bit bigger or a bit you know uh, more spacious or a bit faster or whatever? For me, standard range, fantastic car. Look at that efficiency. Crikey. I hope that's been useful and interesting. Um, okay, this car, I haven't measured the batteries at all. I don't know what degradation we've got, but I haven't even noticed anything. Again, I started this out by saying, look, I've done a range test from a new one. LFP can lose a bit of capacity in the first 20,000 miles, although it's fairly steady there on. Um, but I, who cares, who notice? It's just fantastic, so. Uh, right, well, funny little impromptu video there for me. I hope that's been okay. Sorry about the use of a phone and no microphone, but it's probably actually better than sometimes when the audio equipment goes wrong anyway. <laughs> so, I hope it's been useful. I'm gonna get out of this car. It's a Friday evening, I'm gonna go home. Catch you later.